after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during the conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone please note that this conference is being recorded i now hand the conference over to mr dhruv jain from ambit capital thank you and over to you mr jain thank you hello everyone welcome to tt I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, Dhruv, uh, your voice is not clear. May I request you to uh, kindly repeat? Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, hello, everyone. Welcome to TTK Prestige 2QFI 24 Earnings Call. From the management side, today we have with us Mr. Chandru Kalro, Managing Director, Mr. K. Shankaran, Full Time Director, and Mr. Saranyan, the Chief Financial Officer of the company. Uh, thank you and over to you, sir, for your opening comments. Uh, good evening. This is Saranyan here. Before I hand over the proceedings uh, to Mr. Chandru Kalu for his with his opening remarks, I just want to remind the participants of the Safe Harbor class uh, that discussion today may contain certain statements which are futuristic in nature. Such statements represent the intentions of the management and the efforts being put in by them to realize certain goals. The success in realizing these goals depends on various factors, both internal and external. Therefore, the investors are requested to make their own independent judgments by considering all relevant factors before taking any investment decision. Thank you. Over to you. Thank you, sir, Anil. And uh, thank you, everybody, for joining us on the call uh, for our second quarter FY24 um, uh, earnings call discussion. Uh, just as an introduction, I'd like to say that this was a quarter that was not uh, as well, good as we, we thought it would be. Uh, we, we knew that there was a higher base of the previous year when we got into this quarter, but we were hoping that things would become better. And we also knew that Diwali this year was a month later, but uh, normal growth, given the rest of the economy growing, we thought we'll also accrue to this. Um, however, that was not to be because the demand has not been very healthy. You must have been seeing these reports in various quarters of the, the media, and therefore we have missed our mark this uh, quarter. However, in this situation, we have also seen intense uh, competitive uh, discounting that has happened, which we have tried our best to stay away from and not, uh, uh, you know, in any way damage the basic structure of the company. And I think we've been very successful. So barring the top line miss, I think our, largely our profitability is in the band that we want it to be. And we are hoping that the favorable base of the second half of the next year would help us turn around the situation for the second half. I now uh, invite any questions that you might have on this. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. We'll take the first question from the line of Samir Gupta from India Infoline. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Good afternoon, and thanks for taking my question. Uh, uh, so, first of all, uh, any any quantification you can give of this late Diwali that could have impacted our 2Q numbers? Just trying to get a sense of if we do a 2Q plus 3Q, uh, would that be largely uh, a YOI growth which we were tracking in 1Q, or there is some improvement in underlying demand which we can basically uh, 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 estimate from here on? Your thoughts? Um... Look, I mean, I think I think the situation is not uh, that buoyant. I do believe that uh, demand has not picked up as much as it should have, uh, and uh, therefore, and there's an intense uh, discounting that's happening, which we don't want to do. Uh, we have, however, launched some very good products during this time, and that I hope will give us some better uh, sales. Now, coming back to the quantification of the Diwali, I mean, it is one month. Uh, let us say three weeks 
delayed. I mean, from that point of view, if you see, and if you say that the Diwali pre Diwali sales spike is about 50%, that 50% ideally should accrue of that month's sale in the Q3 instead of Q2. It's difficult to put it in a way that uh, whether this is absolutely accurate or not, but if nothing changes, then that's what the quantification would be. Uh, if I take Q2 plus Q3, we would still miss our growth estimate because there has been uh, a cumulative effect of the first half's uh, demand uh, slowdown, if I might say, that we may not be able to catch up. It's only the base effect of the previous year, which would help us look slightly turned around in the Q3 and Q4, which is what I'm hoping it will be. That's where we stand at this point in time. I'm sorry, I'm not able to quantify this more than that. No issue, sir. But uh, just to retake the three Q, when you say we'll miss, uh, uh, it will probably be a negative number in terms of Y Y growth. Is that would that be a correct? Uh, fair no, no, no. In Q three, in Q three, we are certainly not looking at a negative on a Y on Y basis. Uh, on nine months, it might be still slightly negative. Two Q plus three Q, I was saying, sir. Anyways, nine months is negative is uh, a fair indicator. Slightly negative. It won't be very much negative, but I think it should be slightly negative, given that we missed quite a bit. Got it, sir. And uh, I see that there is still some obsolete inventory that you have uh, written off uh, this quarter. Uh, and I, I remember that last quarter also we had uh, some of this issue. So. Uh, uh, first of all, can you quantify this obsolete inventory hit on gross margin? And secondly, are we now completely behind uh, this issue or there is still some more that can we expect in terms of writing off uh, obsolete inventory? Just, just, just to clarify, there is no write-off of obsolete inventory. What we have said in the, in the, in the, in the, in the uh, uh, release is that we have liquidated some high-cost inventory. There has been no obsolete inventory write-offs. That write-off which we did last year, I don't think we've added to last quarter. We haven't done uh, anything in this quarter. Ah, got it, sir. Th thanks for that clarification. One yeah. last question, if I may squeeze in. Uh, I see the cash flow statement. I see hardly any KPEX done around 46 lakhs at a consolidated level. Uh, I mean, is this a normal uh, 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 thing that you do? Or, uh, I mean, what would be the KPEX guidance for this year? So, I, 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 a lot of capex has happened and it's sitting right now in advances because we have paid advances and that uh, machines haven't been completed. If I'm right, sir, and then it is sitting in loans and advances yeah. in the balance sheet. So, that you can see the number uh, for some lakhs you are mentioning? Yeah, it's a cash flow statement, purchase of fixed uh, equipment. Right. So uh, let let me clarify. There is there is a substantial amount of money that's been paid towards advances for some imported uh, automation equipment, which is happening. As I think in the region of about 18 crores or something, 16 crores, and that hasn't yet gotten capitalized, so to speak. Which is why you are thinking. Actually, we've got a very ambitious. Uh, fully automation plan at our Osur factory, which will, uh, you know, substantially improve on efficiencies from that unit. So CapEx is on stream, and uh, and we are doing it uh, in the, with the same wheel that we were doing it earlier. So to give account the explanation, when we give money to machine fabricators and in advances, when the fabrication is ready, it is WIP. When it's uh, converted into fiction as usable, it becomes a capital investment. So we'll have to wait through this accounting process. Got it, sir. Uh, and the guidance for FR24 in terms of KPEX? 70 crores, yeah. 70 crores, yeah. 70, okay. Thank you. Thanks. For, that's all from me. I'll come back in the case as anymore. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Prakash Kaparia from Anive Portfolio Manager. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. A couple of questions from my end. Look, could you give us some sense on packaging cost? How much is that, you know, as percentage of raw materials? Uh, is it, you know, crude-based linked? Is it paper-based linked? Are we seeing any inflationary trend in packaging costs? So packaging, depending on the category that you're talking about, could be between 8 and 12% of the total bill of materials cost, give or take. There is no inflationary trend that we are seeing in packaging. If anything else, we have actually renegotiated our packaging cost this year, for which you will see the benefits accruing in the second half. Okay, okay. Uh, and are, it is linked to paper, and it is linked slightly to crude because of blue. 
but mainly paper yeah mainly paper okay 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 understood so you you did mention about you know a lot of uh, competitive intensity so you know if you were to just scan through the online channels we we'll, we do see a lot of you know small brands emerging at entry level products so you know just trying to understand how much of the domestic portfolio gets affected to this segment because you know we are present in maybe entry mid premium and you know which specific you know products is it mixture grinders is it gas stoves where you know we are seeing that you know demand getting affected because uh, you know it can't be across uh, price points and it can't be across products and you know that translating to lower sales i was just trying to see if i can quantify that okay first of all uh, let us talk about the overall demand situation the overall demand situation is not as healthy as it should be that is point number 1 because the overall demand situation is not as healthy as it should be the competitive landscape has changed to a lot of discounting that is happening by brands so these are brands which discount and i am not talking about the new unknown brands that you spoke of i'm talking about the regular brands and then substitute you would have seen it in the shopping festivals of the online and uh, and you know all of the kind of discounts that people have given this uh, is definitely uh, going to impact us in in a small way because i still do believe that people buy brands and price is a icing on the cake at the entry level on the other hand the price becomes extremely critical our portfolio largely is in the middle and the upper middle uh, segment of the market the entry level was supposed to be handled by judge unfortunately with the brands going down there judge has not been able to get that kind of traction and the overall demand being low we have missed our top line estimates i don't know if i have answered your question correctly but in that order if you you must take it but sir if i look at you know some of the other you know things happening in india mid to premium seems to be doing well across so you know you look at tvs you look at laptops you look at washing machines if i you know were to dissect that and look at you know apart from entry level all the things are doing fine so just trying to understand the premium is doing fine the mid to premium is not doing fine the premium is definitely doing fine so if you find if you take televisions for example the larger format televisions are doing well if you take cars for example if the suvs and the new launches that are doing well if you take two wheelers it's the premium and two wheelers that are doing well it is the mobile thing apple is doing well so it's the premium end that is doing it is unaffected when i say doing well it's largely unaffected in our case what is happening is the share of wallet which we had got earlier substantially uh, higher today has gone back to other services like travel luggage things like that which is meant that the share of wallet our category is getting is lower which is why the demand is lower and and you know i think a quarter or two ago i had you know uh, tried to understand this a bit more you know in a scenario where real estate has been doing pretty well across you know the country post covid so that you know has to come in the base and that has to translate into higher sales right because some of the other categories you know they've done reasonably well and not seen such a destruction in demand if i were to look at paints or sanitary ware or pipes so you know there could be some lag effect but you know i think real estate has been doing pretty well so don't we think that should be a, now you know a good uh, base for us and that should translate and help us absolutely right that is why it's in the second half we'll talk about <laughs> He also said the word lag, you know. Yeah. The paint follows the immediate building. Kitchen follows much later. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so we're we're hopeful. Second half, we should see some traction. You are absolutely right in your analysis on this one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All the best. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Achal Nohari from JM Financial. Please go ahead. yeah good afternoon thank you for the opportunity sir my first question is uh, this particular um, discounting what you are mentioning 
is it in a particular segment is across a segment uh, is it in like cooker cookware or is it in appliances or across the board and uh, also is it widespread or one single brand is actually kind of distorting the entire market uh, it is across categories really you see there is a trend the the online channels um you know by nature would like to commoditize the category and when they by by commoditizing what they do is they try and get every brand to compete and bid literally like a river auction for the lowest price so that their platform attracts more and more sales so it's not just that one brand is doing it one brand probably will be doing it more than the others but but uh, there is this uh, pressure to you know increase the discounts we have stayed away because for us online is at a very uh, at a certain level which we would not like to endanger the rest of the channels which we are paint taking with it and we don't want to commoditize our brand which is why this is happening it has happened across categories whether it is cookers cookware uh, or uh, you know um, gas stove or mixer grinders it's happening across the board and i would imagine it is more at the entry stroke uh, mid level rather than premium level or it's across the segments as well price points as well no entry and uh, mid level are more vulnerable to this the premium uh, end is generally you know very brand uh, stick it's very sticky for brand uh, it's uh, but the middle is where uh, a large portion of our sales come from you know would you be able to quantify sir uh, the mix in terms of middle and uh, i don't think i can quantify that it's different for different categories it's different for different companies i i get this information you don't want to share publicly okay no problem sir the second question i had was uh, you know with respect to the gross margins now if i look at the gross margins i understand i'm sure it is a function of the mix but if i look at broadly the mix is similar inside it's little better because the appliances drop is larger than cooker cookware how do we explain the compression in the gross margin sir i mean qoq uh, if i look at is there a fair amount of seasonality from a gross margin perspective uh, it's not not just perspective? category uh, sales uh, that you must see you must see category and channels also and i think the higher cost channels normally like all night stocks up in the second quarter and that is why you are seeing some difference actually these things even out i mean now you will see that going the other way hopefully in the q3 for example so that evens out and uh, i think between that uh, last year's uh, level of uh, what 58 uh, 50 it should be around 58 or percent the material cost that's where i think it should be between 58 and 58 and a half shouldn't be very different understood Uh, and and uh, in terms of the new products can you uh, highlight a bit is there any white space within our i mean something like uh, you know these uh, storage container storage uh, plastic container storage uh, or uh, sub categories or sub segments like that is there anything big opportunity out there which we uh, are, haven't yet tapped there is a lot of uh, white spaces in terms of sub smaller categories uh which uh, which we are obviously looking at but within the categories we operate in we have launched several new uh, sub categories so like for example we've launched our anodized non stick cookware we've launched some uh, nice dry fly pressure cookers we've launched uh, swatch gas stoves and uh, pressure cookers which have been uh, you know getting a lot of traction uh there are there is the induction cooktops with whistle counters and pressure cooking mode there are lots of new innovative products that we have launched and i think that is giving us good traction and the brand good uh, recognition got it and sir if i may ask in terms of the outlook i know things are tough right now very hazy but uh, you know from a medium term perspective is it fair to say that we can look at early teens or mid teens kind of a growth at the company level given the initiatives what you taking on the product side new launches side industry growth uh, and stuff like that is, is that a fair assessment your first line said it all it is easy right now for me to take such a stand <laughs> no no but i mean i am sure these things will turn around some day uh, but but i mean and i i think let's let's turn around and then talk about that outlook <laughs> understood and sir yeah, sorry i'm again going back to the same question uh, you mentioned that part of the 2q was impacted because of the delayed festival but now like you said 3 weeks impact right so we are in the fag end of october 
Yeah. But it's fair to say that you know, uh, from a YOI perspective, given uh, the the demand scenario, we would be bit of a flattish only for these Oct- uh, August, September, October combined. I'm just trying to figure out how much is this really about. Yeah, I would I would look at it as September, October, November, and not August, September, October. And I think we will not be flattish. We will back come back to growth in this period. By the way, understood. Uh, great, sir. I'll I'll come back in the queue for follow-ups. Thank you so much. Yeah, thanks. thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We'll take the next question from the line of Kunal Seth from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. <clears throat> so my first question is: uh, Would you be able to share uh, the market growth and our market share trends for the first half? The market has been grown. Our market share is largely stable. Okay. So uh, uh, market share is uh, so we have not, neither gained nor lost. Uh, yeah, I mean, you, you would have seen the first quarter numbers. There is very little to choose from between players. You know, if you look at it, because what numbers you are seeing the players that is their sale into market. What the market share number is, it is their sale of it is the tertiary sales. So, largely, my 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 feeling is that market shares are stable, but the overall market hasn't grown. If anything, it's slightly negative. Yeah, sure. Sure. And sir, my second question is, uh, you know, other around discounting. Sorry to harp on this, uh, but sir, uh, you know, given the fact that uh, you know we are around the festive season, and so was, is it the case that you know Channel was uh, sitting on a significantly higher inventory, and that was they were very keen to discount because the discounting right ahead of festive season seems slightly you know uh, counterintuitive. So no, discounting is not happening only before festive season. It has happened right through Q2. In fact, part of Q1 also was impacted because of this. See, the point is when the market is in growing, everyone is getting a little bit desperate. That's what is happening. It's not that before festival this is happening. Okay. So, uh, uh, but uh, was it the case? Uh, it is generally that market was not growing, or, or channel was also sitting on significant inventory. Uh, or it is just that the market was not growing and therefore there was significant pressure as far as discounting is concerned. I don't think the channel was sitting on very high inventory, but I don't think the channel was in a mood to increase their inventory either. Okay. Having bought channels will not discount. Yeah. They expect discount to come from the manufacturer. <laughs> okay. Got it. Okay. Thank you so much and best of luck for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Anirudh Joshi from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, so thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so can you indicate about the performance of Judge Brand? So where are we in terms of the availability of the product? Is it available across the redistribution of uh, uh, TTK? And uh, how do you see the distribution mapping for Judge Brand? Also, what has been the offtake and uh, growth rates in Judge Brands? And uh, secondly, we have been talking a lot about the new premium brand to be introduced. Uh, so, any update on that? Uh, we have not yet seen any action on that. So, wh- when do we uh, see the launch on that account? Yeah. So, uh, the Judge Brand, as I said, I think we have a few questions before. Uh, unfortunately, has been a victim of all this discounting that is happening, which is because the regular brands itself are going at price points which I should ideally operate with the Judge Brand at. So, that is why that has been a little bit of a slow thing. Having said that, I think around 30-35% of our uh, distribution today has the Judge Brand. And I don't know whether you noticed this time uh, when we were advertising for the festival, we advertised both Prestige and Judge by Prestige alongside each other in the same creative, precisely to drive that kind of distribution across the board. So the Judge brand, while while uh, it's not uh, progressed as that best, good, well as we would have liked it to be, I think it still made very healthy progress, except that because of whatever I said earlier, that's why it is slowing it down. On the upper end brand, we don't have any plans to announce at this point in time. It's work in progress, certainly work in progress, and we'll come back to you as and when we have something to announce. 
ओके ओके श्योर सर एंड सर इन टर्म्स ऑफ द कमोडिटी लेड प्राइसिंग सो डू यू सी द बेनिफिट इज लार्जली इन द नंबर्स नाउ और डू यू सी एनी पॉसिबिलिटी फॉर मार्जिन एक्सपांशन इन एच टू एज वेल ओकेट <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants: anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one. We'll take the next question from the line of Charanjit Singh from DSP Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Hello, sir. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, sir if we uh, you know look at the you know appliances segment which always you know you had a very positive view in terms of the growth which you can see and this segment has also seen a 20% kind of a degrowth so uh, you know within the appliances category if you can touch upon mixer grinder and the other segments the competition because that is generally coming from the large organized players who are you know coming into the even mid and the premium category so if you can just you know give us more detail color on the appliances as a segment and the competition there competition is also going through the same pressures if you ask me i mean whatever i am seeing in the marketplace they are going through the same kind of pressures they are going through the same kind of uh, lack of growth or even degrowth in some cases and uh, there hasn't been too much of a difference everybody has gone and tried to close all the white spaces within each category so everyone launching products in the upper end and in the middle end and in the lower end within that brand itself which is what we are also doing i think uh, there's not much to choose from except for you know some uh, things here and there like our swatch uh, hawks for example which we launched uh, or for example i don't know whether you've seen it we've launched some Some, uh, very unique iot led chimneys which is completely unique which is uh, you know uh, not there with anyone i accept for things like this uh, uh, you know there's not much to choose from but everyone's trying to do the same things if you ask me okay so if you know if uh, there's a quantification of this discounting you know what's the kind of level of discounting which is happening and uh, in the each segment you know maybe mid premium also is there a you know heavy discounting happening and in the you know entry level what's the kind of pricing differential which uh, ttk will have versus you know maybe number 2 number 3 players difficult to say that because the number of box we as we, we operate in 27 28 categories each category has its own set of rules so i mean i don't think i can answer that question in greater detail so the average is because in each category of that about 10 to 30 sk is each model each model is very different compared to the competitors model very difficult for you to draw some line there and sir uh, from the geographic perspective you know uh, generally southern market has been a very important geography for us if you can touch upon you know uh, the southern market itself uh, the entry of the new players because some of the players who are not earlier present now expanding into that market which could create a more sticky competition you know in that market so you know how how you are seeing that well, again the problem is that of demand for example during onam i don't think anybody has told <laughs> whatever they wanted to sell so it's a it's an issue of uh, demand rather than anything else i don't think there is a competitive uh, i mean the lack of competitiveness from prestige or uh, anything that we have to be worried about from a competitive scenario basis okay and sir uh, now we have seen also you know a uh, lot of online sales happening and uh, if you look at the numbers what amazon and all you know they are talking about much higher sales growth so if you can touch upon you know the growth differential which would be there in uh, you know online versus the you know offline channel and uh, is that also one factor where you know the discounting is playing out in a big way and impacting our market share 
No, the online space has definitely been uh, an irritant in terms of the amount of discounting. There is absolutely no doubt. Coming back to the growth that they are talking about, I think you will have to get into greater detail. Uh, whether they have grown in terms of volume or value, according to me, they might have grown in terms of volume, but not in terms of value. But that's something that I don't want to argue my case on. They will tell you things that are not necessarily the full story. Uh, I believe that uh, that kind of discounting is not tenable. Uh, they have gone overboard this time. We had gone overboard in making sure that uh, things uh, don't go out of line in terms of, uh, you know, our channels not getting too much conflicted with whatever is happening. Uh, lastly, uh, from my side, you know, in terms of the competitive pressure now going forward, uh, what is your focus in terms of market share or margin? How how will you see that? Because if you have to, you know, maintain the market share, there might be a, you know, dilution in the margin. Uh, what we are seeing in some of the other categories with the rising competitive intensity and not abating despite even growth picking up. See, as long as, see, I tell you, I can't take a black or white situation there. What I can do is to make sure that I don't do anything that permanently damages the company's profitability and gross margin and uh, net margin situation. Uh, wherever tactically I have to give away something, I have been doing that with the view that it is reversible and not permanent in nature. During the last quarter, you would have seen that almost anyone and everyone who has uh, reported results, has reported uh, uh, drop in their EBITAs. Even the one or two peers who have given results before us this time, you will see that their drop in EBITAs is significantly higher than ours. So we are trying to make sure that our basic structure is maintained. And while doing so, we have not lost our market share largely. We have maintained our leadership positions in our key category. We have maintained our market shares largely, and uh, we believe that this storm shall pass, and we don't want to do anything rash in the middle. Got it, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question, sir. That's all from my side. Thank you. Participants who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one now. We'll take the next question from the line of Shirish Gute from HDFC Life Insurance Company. Please go ahead. Thanks, sir. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, sir, I uh, just wanted to understand in terms of employee cost, uh, both in terms of CAGR as well as uh, in terms of percentage of sales, uh, it has been growing uh, much ahead of uh, the top line, uh, even over a longer period, if I ignore the quarter on quarter volatility. Uh, if you can just explain uh, what should this, as a percentage of sales, this number should settle at in the slightly longer term, especially in the view of the new automation capex that you are doing. And also, uh, there was an announcement uh, regarding uh, productivity, uh, their compensation at Hotur. So maybe if you can explain that. Thank you. So the uh, employee cost and the percentage to sale is looking like it's going up because we haven't grown in top line. That, I think, is the basic truth. Uh, I don't believe that uh, uh, there's anything untoward that has happened there. Our, our salary increases have been uh, largely in line of being slightly above inflation. And um, it's, uh, the LTS, uh, the labor settlement that happened in Osur also has happened in that same spirit. Um, we are uh, not seeing, we, we are seeing this at settling down at our uh, uh, long-term averages that were there, and that is where it will be. And this uh, automation capex, uh, how much saving are you expected to see on, especially I think I believe employee cost will be the key uh, cost which will be. So, one second, automation, see, look at the company's uh, payroll structure, there is a white collar and there is a blue collar. The automation will, will save some money on the blue collar. Uh, it also gives us extra capacity utilization. Therefore, we will have a larger um, EBITDA margin going forward once we complete the automation. Um, as I, as I got, as uh, MD pointed out, the increase in our salary costs have been normal. Apart from blue collar, which is the uh, the settlements and uh, movement in the uh, DA. Otherwise, look at as a company, we have been operating between 7 and 8%. 
where the same interest will go touch our eight percent, where the we are growing, it become even to six point eight percent. Okay, sure. So your 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 average settling down will be around eight percent is what the point is. And which is far below the industry average. Yeah. But for that to happen, your even if your top line grows at double digits, employee costs could have to be uh, significantly in terms of in low single digit from here on. For that in, to happen, in a, in a lighter man, unless I pay my employees, they will not have purchasing power. So they don't purchase, they have no business. This applies to the entire industry. So, See, if you look at last year, for example, we were at seven point eight percent standalone. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Right. Uh, I mean, the, the reason you're seeing this go up is because my top line has gone down. That is why you're seeing this go down. Mm -hmm. Understand. Sure, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Achal Lohade from JM Financials. Please go ahead. Uh, so just uh, uh, wanted to check in terms of cooker cookware capacity as of now and what kind of expansion are we looking at over the next couple of years and given the capex what we are looking at so we are not looking at aggressively increasing our capacity through additional factories or additional machinery however our capacities will go up because of the automation which mr shankaran just spoke of um, the, our ability to run a third shift from the same amount of machinery would go up because it's automation. So uh, there, there's enough capacity. I don't think I'm seeing any untoward capex happening uh, to meet with any growth objectives that we might have as we go along in the next three to five years. Got it. Any quantification you can give, sir? What is the current capacity in terms of? We are utilizing between uh, 65 and 70 percent. Uh, at this point in time, with the automation, that utilization will come down in the short run, but we can then use that time to actually produce even more once the automation comes. Understood. And of the total, uh, so I presume entire cooker cookware is in house uh, uh, while yeah. appliances yeah. Uh, substantially. Appliances manufacture. are contract manufacturer. Yeah. Yeah. So, how much is the contract manufacturing is of appliances? The entire appliances are contract manufacturer. We don't make much at all in that. Okay, okay. Uh, they're all dedicated vendors to us, and they're all under contractual manufacturing uh, system. So when you say dedicated, you mean they are exclusive to us? Is that 90% of their business is with us, plus, in many cases. Okay, okay, understood. Sir, um, you know, we've been uh, kind of uh, looking at significant exports for a while. Any update what is happening? I know things are tough again. Uh, overseas as well, but you know, any concrete steps we have seen uh, taken on the export front, if you could uh, highlight. See the exports also. If you are you are aware that many of the after the COVID, what happened was many of our retailers were overstocked in inventory, and they have only now started normalizing in their inventory now, which is why the exports have not been as good as you know we would have liked it to be. However, what the good news is that we have now come very close to closing some deals with some new customers as well. And uh, I can't talk about it at this stage, but I think that that will also give us growth apart from the existing customers, uh, you know, growing by themselves. So exports should be back on track in the next uh, two quarters or so. That's what I feel. Right. Sir, if I look at the competitors, some of the competitors are doing very good numbers on the export so is it that you know we are looking at a certain margin benchmark and that's why we kind of lose out no the, 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 the person you are referring to is at the lowest end of the market uh, with a very large retailer and uh, we are not uh, we uh, we did not have that equipment until six eight months back and I believe that we have that equipment now and we can definitely compete in that area. But largely, TTK Prestige prefers to, uh, you know, work in the value-added segment, prefers to work with uh, middle and upper end, which is what we work with in India. And uh, that's been our strategy. And we can also offer this, but that is not our primary offering. And margins could be thinner. Yeah, the margins are thinner and... Uh, you have seen the kind of margin profile of the person you just referred to over the last three quarters. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, got it, sir. I think that's that's about it from my end. Uh, thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. 
anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touch tone phone now As there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Well, thank you. That was an interesting session. I must say that uh, uh, you know um, uh, these uh, the, these phases come and go, and I believe I'm very optimistic for the second half of the year. I believe that things will turn around. I believe that this country is. on the right track in terms of its economy and our category should get back its rightful share of wallet as we go along and i hope it's a better time that hopefully a better call next time thank you thank you thank you members of the management ladies and gentlemen on behalf of ambit capital that concludes this conference we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you